Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. Right on this little episode today, we're going to be doing an update on that little budget shrimp tank that we made only a few weeks back now. Just to give you a little update of how it's running, how it's going, how the little inmates are doing, and what's been basically going on with the tank over the, uh, over the last few weeks. But as you can see, we've got some amazing growth. We've got some of the dwarf sage here on the bottom and the hair grass is starting to take off now. The Sawasatang, or Suswasatang as I keep being told it's called, is, um, is growing really nicely. It's not a fast growing plant, but it takes some time to stick and adhere to, the, uh, to those trees that we made from, those, from that privet hedge that we made when we put this little tank together. And I've also put a little bit of rickier in each one as well, because that can give a nice bit of contrast, different colours. It's a lighter green than the, uh, the Nasaswata tang is, so um, it's quite nice as well. Everything seems to be going really well. The cycles are lovely, the filter's lovely and cycled. The shrimp are doing extremely well. As you can see, it looks like a little lemon tree. There's, uh, with those little yellow sakuras all over the place, all having a great time and feeding away. Now, I've I haven't fed them for a couple of days. I tend to feed them every two days with a various mixture of food. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the foods that I do use, I normally I make my own, to be honest. Um, I've got videos, various videos in my playlists on how I make my shrimp food. I won't go and drag you through all that again. You can also, you can go back and, um, and also look at the videos and learn and make some yourself. It's going to save you a lot of money. It's good fun picking up all the leaves and different ingredients and mixing it all up together and um, you'll have good fun making it. You might get your partner shouting at you in the kitchen when you're using the blender and things. I normally do. That's why I had to buy my own. She kept shouting at me for using the blender. So, uh, what you're going to get when you're into this aquarium uh, hobby, you're going to come across these little things in your lives. As you can see, we've got lots and lots of buried females. I'm going to give you a nice close-up of the females in a minute, but we've got, I would say, maybe 15 to 20 of those have got berries on and um, we're going to have a big explosion here shortly of shrimplets. You can see one shrimplet there just swimming up into the tree there. Now we've had some hatch already from some of them were actually buried when I put them in and they've had theirs and they're hiding around in, in amongst the trees and on the back of the filters and in between the ribs of the filters. That's an amazing place to look. It's in between those little ribs and the filters when you first get your shrimp and you're all eager and you see the berries and you see the berries have gone and you find those little molts in your tank after they've uh, after the babies have gone and they molt out again if you look between the little ribs and the filters you're going to find them in there that's where they like to go and that's why it's important to uh, to feed them and I'll get into the feeding side of things in a minute or in a while and um, if you take if you if you that's if you've decided to uh, to have a go at this little tank like I said, when we first made this tank, this was all riverbed sand, which we, which we cleaned and boiled. You can go back and see how I put this tank together, um, where we found the tree. Obviously, the plants I had, the stones came from nature, sand came from nature, the wood, the sticks all came from nature, and we went through, we treated all that, and we've got a right little booming colony of shrimps now. It does make me laugh, because I get a couple of comments on there. I had one comment from some guy saying, not sure it was, saying, oh, Tank's not, not very good at all, massive loads of mistakes, all that kind of stuff. And as you can see, everything's dying and it's looking very unhealthy in there and nothing's breeding at all. So that kind of uh, blew his theory out of the water that um, of all those mistakes that I've made. So, um, and I've been doing this for nearly 40 years. I, uh, I've picked a few tricks and trade, you know, hints and tips up along the way. And, um, and I wouldn't be telling you these things if they didn't work because I wouldn't want anyone to be hurting and harming shrimp in the process so um, just because it boosted my channel ratings or anything along those lines so I, obviously that the shrimp and the and the fish and everything that I keep mean the world to me so I want them to be kept in the best conditions that I can and I've recreated these things over so many years I was keeping most of the I was keeping fish before most of these youtubers were even thinking about fish and um, it's just one of them things like I say the welfare of the creatures is what matters to me and I wouldn't give false information out there if I didn't think it would work to harm these little creatures in any way shape or form so uh, yes everything's doing really well we've got some little snails some little 
Little turbos running around as I call them, cleaning up around the joint, making sure everything's going, that algae's gone, they eat the algae as well obviously, and uh, so do the snails, but apart from that, I've not cleaned the glass once since I've put this tank together. All the little cleanup crew and all the little guys in there have um, I've been kept, I've been taking care of all that. It's like you see in nature. You look in nature, you see pristine riverbeds and different things, and that's because nature has found a way and it's put everything, all the resources it can into things. Everything, all the snails, the fish, everything plays a part to keep these little ecosystems functioning perfectly. So, um, and you can always tell when things are out of whack because things go wrong and algae forms and all those sorts of things go on. So uh, that's when you know things aren't right. Temperature-wise, the tank's running at 22 degrees. We've got a TDS in there of around 200, I would say. 200, 250. Haven't checked it this week, but it's going to be around 250, I would have thought. And... Um, Little thriving colony of little neocaridinas, absolutely beautiful. And, and and cherries are the same. Most of your neo, uh, your velvets, your blue velvets, your pumpkins, your, all the, there's so many different types now. And um, like I said before in my previous shrimp peeping videos, guys, if you follow, if you do something and you keep something, consistency is the key. Okay, if you're running your tank at a certain per, few parameters, make sure you stick to those parameters. It's when you sort of like watch someone's youtube video and they'll say oh no you've got to keep the tds at 400 no you've got to have the ph of 6.5 no you've got to have it at 8.2 you got to have it. and you get confused with all this information because somebody looks like they know what they're doing what works for me works for me in my conditions and everything else that's what i'm trying to say is not it doesn't all work around the same uh, the same area is what i'm trying to get at some things will thrive at certain conditions when they're used to them and other things, when you bring them from a certain type of environment and plonk them into a different environment, won't do as well because they haven't been acclimatised, acclimated to those conditions. So that's when you tend to get trouble. Or well, like I say, when you listen to other people, they're giving you good advice. I'm not dissing anybody. They always get, they can give you perfectly good advice. But what works for them might not work for you. That's what I'm trying to say. So if you stick to a routine, find yourself somewhere which is some, you know, like a, a breed of Sakura or a breed of Caradina. Uh, you know neos or caradina and you find it works for you stick to it because they will get every time you have a breed a brood sorry of baby shrimp what will happen is is they'll grow up in your conditions and then they'll have babies they're growing up in your and so that environment they get used to over time and and this is what i've done over the years and people say what do you keep these at and i'll say blah 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 and they'll say wow if i kept mine in that they'd be dead and the reason is, is because I've kept them in these conditions for so long. I've bred them and bred them and bred them in these conditions that we've got here in South Wales. And that's what I've used. Some people say, oh, do you use RO water? Do you use this? I'll say, well, with this tank, especially there, I'll give this, I'll warm the water up. We've got very low TDS here in Wales. I think it comes out the tap here at about nine. Sometimes it can be anything from that. Sorry. You get a TDS of around, I'd say, 60 to 70. Um, I was thinking of something completely different there. And um, another work here. But other places it won't work. You've got harder waters, different softer waters, all that kind of stuff. What I'm saying is, breaking it down to the, stick to what works for you. Okay? That's the ideal thing. And keep keep at it. And, uh, and you'll slowly get there. Some people say, oh, I just cannot keep shrimp. Every time I put a shrimp in my tank, it dies this that and the other and it just shows you that it can be done with patience and time right getting on to another subject now is the baby shrimp and they're going to be coming along very very shortly so what i've got and what i use is this stuff okay it's called biozyme and i also use this stuff genchem polytase you probably heard if you're new to the channel this is what i use for my shrimp when they first hatch Okay, I'll stick them there so you can see them. They've got little bacterial cultures in there. And basically when something first hatches, when a shrimp first hatches out, you can see one little white one there. Look on that sponge filter there. There he is, just where my finger was there, that little white dot. Um, yes, when, they, when little baby shrimp hatch, guys, what they do is they'll hatch and they'll go somewhere 
like in between the ribs of the filters, which is an amazing place to find them if you're looking with your torches of a night. They won't move very far. They like to stay where they are and they'll feed where they are. And this is a really crucial time where they've got to get their little guts full of food, decent bacteria growing, cultures growing inside them to make them strong, to get them started off and to get them molting and get them growing. And it's imperative that you feed this sort of stuff, okay? You've got all kinds of good stuff in this. This protease stuff, lipase, amylase, bacillus, um, subtilis, all these different little cultures in there, okay? Which like, they're enzymes and they, they get into the gut and they help them speed up that little metabolism and get them going. And it's great for fish as well. It's basically a powder food. You mix it with water and you squirt it in your tank. And um, I use that. I don't know if you've ever seen. I've got a video on how I made that with these crazy straws that you can buy from the shops. These um, wiggly straws. You put them in boiling water and it's thermoplastic and it just literally uncoils and you can shape it any which way you want. So I made this. And I just take the top off, shake it up, and I can puff a piece in each of my tanks. I've got a video on that on my playlist. If you want to know how to make that, that's on there. Go back and have a look on that one. And it's the same with the Biozyme, okay? It's got yeasts and different things in it. I can put it up to the screen there. And you can freeze frame it and look at the ingredients. But it's all little good starter stuff. For shrimp and they really do need it okay guys when they're first when they're first starting off in the world um, and you're going to get a better success rate when they hatch but when you think about it each one of those shrimps can have okay up to i would say anywhere between 25 to 30 shrimplets okay at any one time it all it all depends as well on um on the health of the tank if you've got a healthy tank which this one is okay you're going to find your, your shrimp, the adult shrimps, and these are all adults. If they're adult shrimps and it's a healthy tank, you're going to get around 25 to 30 berries per shrimp, okay? That's when you can tell when you've got a healthy colony and the water is spot on because they will have a real full amount of eggs. That little baby shrimp there, look. Okay, but when the water is not as good, what you'll find is, is they won't have as many eggs or they may start to drop them. If you've got a dark substrate, you're gonna to start to see little piles of eggs on the bottom. And um, if you get them quick enough, you can put them in a little aerator, a little shrimp saver, and um, and you can bring them on artificially if you're lucky enough to catch them. But nine times out of 10, they'll drop them and another shrimp will pick them up and eat them pretty quickly. So, um, and they'll put that protein back into their little bodies to do them good. And then they'll make some more berries later on. But that's what you'll normally find. They won't. If your tank's not healthy, you're going to end up with a, a big chunky female, and you might have only 10, 10 berries, nine or ten berries hanging up underneath. And you think, well, she hasn't got many this time. She may have had a lot. She may have dropped them because the water quality's not good, or she might not be as healthy as she should be, and not produced as many as she should have done. So that's a really good little tip there, guys. If you've got a nice healthy system, if you see your eggs aren't, you haven't got as many eggs on your females test your water it's normally a good indicator that something's going on inside your tank and that uh, you might have to do something or obvious and and as well when you're doing um, changes in tanks as well now when you get to this stage when they're all buried up and everything else right as soon as you see the berries hold off on your water changes or do really really minimal water changes because if you do a big water change when they've got berries on them okay what will happen is is they'll that'll force a molt and they will throw that shell off, and by throwing the shell off, they'll throw all the berries off as well. I'm not sure if you guys have found that in your bottoms of your tank sometimes after a water change, you'll say, oh, I had a lovely female um, cherry there. She had loads of little yellow berries. It looked absolutely beautiful, couldn't wait for them to hatch. And then all of a sudden, you got up in the morning after a water change, and you saw a, a shed on the floor with all the berries on. And you're like, oh no, what's happened? It's because you've done a water change and you forced them out. And that's what you don't want to be doing that when they're heavily buried like that. You keep your water changes right down until those babies keep your feed down as well you don't have to be feeding them up you know every day really go easy on the feed i haven't fed these for two days what i'm going to do now is i am actually going to go into my kitchen i've just boiled up some broccoli you know what i'm like for my broccoli and my shrimps i swear that's what makes them keeps them nice and healthy fresh bit of broccoli and um boil it up in the microwave or on the hob and get it nice and soft and i'll break off a little floret and I'll drop that in now and you'll see them go to work on it, okay?
Right, there you go. I have a little floret of broccoli there, look, which I've just snipped off the main piece. Obviously, I've got other things all over the place. My plecos and things will eat all those. So I'm just going to drop that in. It's like they're waiting for it to go in. Look at that. Now, look, they're on it already. As I put my hand in there, I haven't even dropped it yet, look. So I'll drop that down. Let that touch down. Boom, there you go. And um, what I'll do is now is I'll give you a closer, a closer view of what's going on on that piece of broccoli okay all right guys there you go there's a little bit of a better close-up view for you it won't be long before they'll um they'll be absolutely teeming all over that like i said i haven't fed them for a couple of days and they're very very hungry you can see at the moment it's just mostly males which have swarmed all over that remember if i told you before if you're new to the channel the males We've got a thinner abdomen and they haven't got that big frying pan shaped second scale on the abdomen going back okay like the females and they've got a straighter back females are more heavy set in the back big dish shape big dish uh, scale and a bit more of a hump back on them and you'll see the girls they'll turn up in no time at all oh, there's a better angle for you There's a few females turning up now. And as you can see, they're very, very busy. Swarming all over that. As will those little, there'll be a little pilgrimage of ram's horn snails coming across the, uh, the substrate as well. Heading towards that for a feed as well. There's lots of little baby ones in there. What I tend to do with the ram's horns, guys, is take the parents out to stop them laying more eggs. And I leave all the little baby ones in there because there's no end of them in there. If you look on the substrate and on the leaves of that dwarf sage. And, um, and obviously they're too young to breed. So they're going to be taking their time just feeding away, eating that algae and quite happy just grazing away. And then I'll take the adults out and put them in my other tanks, various other tanks. When I do get up. An influx of them, I'll feed them to some of the crayfish because they like to eat them as well. And that keeps numbers down or I'll take some down to my local fish shop as well. Because they can take them on and some people haven't got them. Some people like to keep snails so they'll. Um, I like to give a few away to anyone who wants them. But they're really tucking into that. Make sure you boil it guys for a good few minutes and make sure it's nice and soft. So you can hold it between, get the stalk between your fingers and press it and it will turn It'll, you know, you'll, you'll compress it very, very easily. And that's when it's nice and soft. And then they can pull it apart a lot easier. You can see some of the females there. They're absolutely jammed to the, to the gunnels with eggs. And there's a lot more on the top of the sponge filter over there as well. There's a few more coming in. But over the next sort of 20 minutes, every one of those shrimp in the tank is going to be Pulling away on that once that scent goes around the tank. They're like bees around a honey pot. Look at that. One of my favourite shrimps, the old yellow sakuras are. I must keep a few, uh, I must get a few more different strains as well. Always fancy keeping the blue velvets. Not kept them before. Oh yes I have. I kept them once before but uh, didn't do too, too well with those. Only bought a couple of pairs. And sometimes, like it happens to the best of us, you lose things and um, you've got to carry on and keep trying. Like I said before, with water parameters and things and acclimating shrimp, very important to do that. You know, don't just go chucking them in tanks and thinking they'll be all right. Because, like I've said on so many videos, it doesn't shock, it shocks them and then it won't kill them straight away. But later on, maybe a week, week and a half down the line, you'll, find, you'll start finding them dead all over the bottom and you'll wonder what you've done wrong. And that is probably the reason that you've put them into completely different parameters and you shock them and they're quite fragile little guys. And don't like change. So the most, um, that's the most important thing I can, can say to you, that is that consistency, like I said earlier, with shrimp, with everything really. I mean, you can keep tetras, I've bred tetras in all different types of parameters. Um, that I've bred over time. It's harder to bring something in and then turn it, you know, 
and turn it around and get it to breed. It's easy sometimes because of those parameters that they've been used to. Wild caught things especially, you know, they're used to those wild parameters. You bring them into the into your homes with the chlorinated waters and different things and all these, and they just don't take very well, you know, and you lose some. But it's all trial and error. Do your best you can to make sure these little creatures that you're looking after are as healthy as you can make them. Give them a wide variety of foods, bits of carrot, broccoli, spinach, is another good one that's high in calcium, high in magnesium, as is broccoli, and they need that for that shell to regrow that shell after they molt and to get through a successful molt. Because if, if they haven't got the minerals and the vitamins and that in the water that they need, they'll have a bad molt. And it basically what it means is their shells can really harden up as well and they, they won't be able to get out of the shell, so they actually die in their shells. And um, you'll find them on the ground. You might see a little split in the shell and wonder what happened to it. It's basically it's died in the shell, it can't get out. So they need to be fed correctly, guys. And some of the best foods in nature, like you've seen in my other videos, you can make yourself because it's all out there. All the things out in the wild, shrimps don't go to the shops and buy food, do they? Nature provides everything that they need. They, the leaves falling in the water, you've got the decaying leaves, you've got insects falling in the water, they're, doing, they're, they're going to die, they're going to predate on them as well. So they're real opportunistic scavengers, all shrimps are, and um, well most shrimps, obviously fan shrimps and they're a different, different ball game altogether because they're a different way of feeding, but um, most shrimps, omnivorous, they will have a go at literally anything. That's, and um, that's just the way they are, they're opportunistic feeders, omnivorous, and, um, and they will have a go at absolutely anything. Also, I'd like to say a massive thank you to all you guys who have been supporting the channel over the last year and, um, and have stuck aboard and have carried on watching the videos. Really do thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really do. It means so much to me making these videos and knowing you guys are watching them and enjoying watching them, getting a bit of information. Hopefully that's helping you, helping yourselves, your kids to start tanks, to keep tanks running, to keep things going. And I'm always at the end of a, of a message. If you need any help, you know that. I always try and get back to you guys if I can. Obviously the channel's growing growing all the time and um, if I don't get back to some of you as quick as you'd like I do apologize but I do my best to get back to you all and, um, and some of the videos that I've been some of the guys have been some of you guys have been watching some of my earlier videos and um, asking me questions about them and that's like wow I've had to go back and watch the video myself because I can't remember what I did in the video to be honest <laughs> but if I can help one person out it makes it all worthwhile for me it really does like I said, I've been at this now for probably 40 years and um, since I was a young lad and I've been and come across the most things that you can get up to and be around in a fish room or an aquarium. I've kept so many different species over the years and I'm so looking forward to getting back into my, into my coral room with my back playing up as it has been recently and all this sciatic trouble I've been getting. It's an absolute nightmare to, uh, to try and do anything for too long, otherwise it just really starts to ache. So I've got to really make things, make videos in between when the painkillers are, um, are at their highest and they're doing their job and I can make little videos like this for you and hopefully give you a little bit of information. But I can't wait to get into that coal room. I've got all the timber now. I've got the glass for one of the tanks. That's arrived. Um, I've got lights for in there, I've got pumps, I've got skimmers, you name it, and I've got it. But all I need now is a bit of, a bit more health to get back up to speed, to get back out there. And it doesn't help when it's cold as well. It's the winter here in the UK, so um, I know that's nothing to what some of you guys put up with in the world. With your minus 20s and different things in uh, different parts of Canada and the US. And I know that's, uh, you put up with a lot colder than we do, but... Um, as we get older, we get a few more aches and pains in there. But I can't wait to get out there and start putting all these tanks together. I've got so much to do, it's unreal. But I can't wait to get on with it. Yes, can't wait to get on with it. Oh, I really can't. Loads of berries on that girl there.
Fantastic stuff, look at that. A little hive of activity. I'll try and show you some of the babies on the rocks at the back here if I can. They're a little bit, there's a little one there. Oh, there's two there, look. As you can see, their little legs are flat out eating away. Lots and lots of some smaller ones there as well. I tell you, they're so when they when they're small like that, it's uh, it's extremely hard to see them. Sometimes we go right in onto the the gravel. Sometimes you can see them on the gravel, hiding amongst the parents. But they're going to make short work of that. Sometimes people ask me, how long do you leave it in for? Well, I'll leave that in for for the day. First thing this morning, eight o'clock in the morning. So uh, this evening I'll come in, and all the all the little heads of the broccoli will be gone, and they'd have had a good feed by then. And the rest of it I'll take out and put into my pleco tanks, and they'll soon make short work of that overnight in the king pleco tanks. Anyway, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you on this one. Hope you enjoy that little update on this little shrimp tank and how healthy it is. And I hope you guys give it a go. Anyway, as always, all stars, look after yourselves. Happy New Year. Hope you have good luck in 2019 and you all stay fit and well. And I'll see you on the next edition of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now. Just me and my